Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 257 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I am your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, you've got to make your money work for you guys. Uh, a lot of people come to me f- for financial advice, as they should, okay? I am a, when it, when it comes to money, I'm a guru, all right? You should take heed of my words. How else do you think I bought this manor in Frankston? Um, I, look, I, I'll tell you this, you have to make your money work for you, all right? You're not just going to wake up one day from having your little fucking job, uh, saving up your little coins. That's not how you become rich, okay? Let me give you an example of how I made my money work for me this week, okay? You got to make your money work because, uh, you know, you listen to all those cunts on TikTok, all those uh, entrepreneurs on TikTok. You got to make your money work for you, all right? I reckon a lot of those guys would like to bring the slaves back. You know, you got to make black people work for you and not pay them. I think they want to make money work for them because it's it's as close to slavery as you can get. We're making this thing that everybody likes work for us and we're not we're not paying it. You know, I mean, that really is hustle culture. You wake up at the crack of dawn. All right. You grind uh, while everyone else is out there and having fun. I would say that the, the slaves were the original entrepreneurs. And if Instagram was around, a lot of those guys would have a lot more followers. Um but what I'm trying to say is you have to make your money work for you. And uh, look, man, uh, here's, here's how I made my money work for me this week, okay? I needed a laptop. I need, I've, I've desperately needed a brand new laptop for a really long time, okay? Uh, R- Rosie is editing on her personal laptop, right? And that, that thing is built for, for browsing Tumblr uh, <laughs> and writing fan fiction, all right? It's not an editing workhorse like the Lewis Spears business demands. I've had another guy come in. Right, and he's been editing stand-up clips, and he's had to use my laptop. Right, so now when I have two people, right, Rosie's hard at work writing fan fiction for me, <laughs> and then other blokes there editing stand-up clips. I'm sitting at my desk with nothing to do. All right, I I need to be working hard. I needed a new laptop. Now laptops are very expensive, especially the new MacBook laptops, because why would I buy a Windows computer? Why? So I can not airdrop anything? So that I can have an ugly fucking Windows bar so Clippy can come up and suck my dick? No! I don't want a Windows computer. Delete your paragraph. Oh, you can get something just... Hey, hey, hey! Shut the fuck up, all right? How about that? How about that? I'm too far into the Apple ecosystem, I can't escape. You better believe as soon as they start making microphones, this one will turn white. Absolutely. So anyway, I need. I, I decided I needed this new laptop. I've needed it for months now. It's slowing down my whole operation. I want to edit shit in 4K. This whole fucking podcast, right? Because we can't shoot in the studio right now because the kitchen's being built. Yeah, we got a kitchen. You know why? Because I made my money work for me. That's why. Not only do we have a kitchen, we're painting it. Custom colored kitchen. All right? How many of you guys have colored kitchens? Depends how many of you are slave masters. Bang! All right. <laughs> so, so anyway, little nice little segregation joke, joke, bit of a throwback that one. Um, so, you have to make your money work for you. And so, what I decided to do, right? This laptop, six and a half thousand dollars. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, "What the fuck?" And I'm included in those that group. That's a big group. That's a hundred percent of people who heard that number, right? But you have to make your money work for you. And here's, here's how I pulled it off. What I did, right, was instead of go out, right, and, and do a bunch of shows, earn money, maybe get a part-time job, maybe do a, a bit of a hustle, maybe buy some cryptocurrency or some stocks and flip my way up there. Instead, what I did was I uh, just put the kind on a credit card. And, uh, and, and that's a great example of how to make your money work for you is you just, you just, you just fucking you put, put it on a credit card Buy the thing and hope hope to God the content that's made on it increases your support on Patreon. So uh, that's that's just another example of how Hustler Spears is out there making money moves every single day to really just get ahead in life. Because here's the thing. What do you need good credit for? <laughs> to buy a house. Once you got the house, what do you need good credit for? <laughs> Nothing. So it doesn't matter anymore. What are they going to do? Repossess the house? Likely. (laughs) It's it's certainly, it's it's entirely possible. As Joe Rogan would say, right? So look, (laughs) the point is, guys, I'm in here 
and they can take it from me if they want. They can try, okay? Uh, support me on Patreon for early access to Spearhead Sunny's episodes and uh, extended Patreon episodes as well, and uh, a special a special bonus perk of paying off my laptop. Very expensive. Um, <laughs> Now, a lot, of, a lot of you might be thinking, oh, fuck, that's expensive, but you haven't seen the render times on this baby. Neither have I, actually. I just got it. I've, <laughs> fuck, if, if, if it's not quick, I'll, I'll be, next episode will be half, a half an hour longer, right, to export. Little editing joke there for you. Um, guys, <laughs> huge news. I'm famous. Keelan's cancelled, okay? Uh, my star is ascending and, uh, you know, Keelan's is plummeting. Mm-hmm. It's all over for him. I'm on the way up. I had uh, I got the big call up last week. <laughs> I got the big call up, baby. The the phone call that I've been waiting for. The phone call I think we all know that I deserve. The phone call that is really going to change the trajectory of my career. I finally got it right. I was having I was having a, a regular week, you know, just enjoying my life, just absolutely running up debt on the credit card with one purchase. And I thought, how am I going to pay for this? And then, you know what? The universe provides. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of shit talk about the secret, you know? Believe in something and it'll become true, but it is true. And I was thinking, man, all I need is, is one opportunity and I'll, I'll grasp it with both hands and, and I'll change my own life. And that call came, right? I got a phone call from SBS. <laughs> Thank you very much. It gets better. To appear on a panel show with other comedians for an episode, not a series, not a movie, not a regular appearance, but one appearance on one episode of not a comedy program, but an intellectual panel show. Well, not really a panel show. Those can be funny. More of a, more of a, more of a expensive podcast called SBS Insight. A show with very, with a with a long decorated history of producing Australia's best comedic talent. Some of their previous hilarious episodes have been how. Institutionalized racism have affected Aboriginals in Australia. Uh, they've also done episodes on uh, sexism in the workplace. Uh, don't woo that. We are no longer an all-male operation. Those woos are outlawed. Actually, she's gone home. Woo! <laughs> That's not on. Right? I'm on. An, I'm going to be on an episode of SBS Insight to talk about cancel culture and comedy. But it gets even better than that. Unpaid appearance. <laughs> and so, in my leisure time, as a, as a bit of fu- for a bit of fun as a hobby, I decided of my own free will, because as we all know, this is more more of a of a free time occupation than it is a paying one. I decided to fly up to Sydney. For an unpaid appearance on a panel show to talk about cancel culture in comedy. Now, the show works like this, and it's going to be out in a couple of weeks. I'll let you know when it's out. And I and and it was fucking awesome. I'm, I know that I'm joking, but honestly, it was awesome. Really cool experience. Um, probably, uh, honestly, one of the best opportunities I could have gotten if I started my career 20 years ago. All right. <laughs> But but today but today it's today I you know you might as well put me on channel thirty one you know what tell your mum she might be excited she won't know who I am but she'll be excited that someone you like is on SBS Insight and she'll remind you when it's going to be on TV and you will go oh yeah I'll watch that and then you'll forget um but don't worry because I will create a supercut version for my own YouTube channel that will make me look great. And that's what you'll watch, okay? And that's what is really important. So, I'm on this TV show now. I'm now they they did like a they did. This is how fucking uh, scripted television is. 
it's it's one of these basically it's almost like Q&A but everything they talk about doesn't really affect anything it's just a discussion about social issues so they had 10 people who are experts in entertainment or had experience with cancel culture and then they had 10 members of the public that were just regular people from different backgrounds different walks of life everything like that um and uh they basically just get all of us in a room and they talk about cancel culture they ask uh three or four questions to each expert i was one of the experts uh and then they throw to the audience to get like the average person's point of view um and i'm on there uh i'll say some names that you guys maybe will know akmal was on there i love him he was great uh, Jordan Raskopoulos is on there. You might, you may remember her from, uh, Axis of Awesome. Now she streams on Twitch. Uh, fuck. Who else was there? Sammy Shah. Your dad will know him. Uh, and, uh, and, and there was also, uh, a drag queen. I'm not sure why. Uh, I maybe we'll find out when the episode airs. Um, I loved his lipstick. Nice and glittery. Uh, oh, and then there was also a woman called Prue McSween. That's a real name. Uh, and uh, and when you watch the episode, I just want you to remember that she's not she's not doing a character. Uh, that is her. That's actually who she is, and her and what she says. So keep in mind, I'm going in, going. All right, I'm going to talk about cancer culture and comedy. Uh, they played my Prince Philip bit, which was really cool. Like having a having a comedy bit played on television, and then we kind of dissected it and the reaction to it, and and how I got in trouble for it, and all that kind of stuff that that uh, you know I've already talked about. Um, but uh, then this Prue McSween woman. Now keep in mind, it's ten. It's it's like ten. Well, eight comedians, and then there's a drag queen who I'll who I will tentatively. I'll put their. I'll put one of their toes. In the comedy genre, all right? Every now and then they do something funny. I wouldn't call it stand-up, but they do tell jokes. All right, fuck it. I'll be generous. We'll put the drag queen in the comedy section too, okay? Uh, but then there was Prue McSween, and she stuck out like uh, like the drag queen's thumb in the comedy genre. Um, I just, I, I don't know why she was there, and I don't know, it, I don't know if she knew why she was there either, because she arrived and she just saw like it, all of these stand-up comedians, and she's like a shock jock type person. Uh, she got in trouble, her example for getting cancelled, and I don't know if this is going to make the cut because she was very upset with me. <laughs> her example of getting cancelled was she was on daytime television. Now, I'd like you to remember, daytime television. Television during the day. Uh, and uh, there was a story about like 10 or 12 intellectually disabled kids, uh, and that came on, and it was a terrible story. And then after the story... Uh, she 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 referred to them with a slur on television, and sh- and she tells this whole story, and then she's like, ah, oh, I don't know why I was made to apologise. The cancel culture, uh, social justice woke mob came after me. Yeah, look, I don't know if uh, if 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 talking about it like like a like a ten intellectually disabled kids and then referring to them with a slur is. Uh, uh, and people getting upset about that is cancel culture. I think that just might be people pointing out that that's a very cunty thing to do on daytime television. And maybe, you know what? Maybe it, even if they deserve the slur, should it be said at 12 p.m. on television? Probably not, I would say, you know? I mean, I, I haven't met the kids. I don't know the story, but I would assume if I was like, uh, you know, my mum on, on lunch break... I wouldn't want to be hearing slurs on the morning show. Do you know what I mean? That's just me. Um, but anyway, she goes and she tells a story and, 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 and I laughed the whole time. Uh, everyone else was horrified. I laughed the whole time. And I'm not sure if they're going to cut around that. I'm not sure if they're going to include me laughing. I'm not sure if they're going to make it look like I approved of her using the slur, which I did not. But I do think it's quite funny that I laughed the entire story because of how she told it and how she was like such a stereotype of a of like a shock jock right wing boomer, the woke social ju- you can't even call you can't even call disabled kids slurs anymore. Where's what's gone wrong with the world? 
She literally goes, she, she told some other story about how she was like racist or she said something that was perceived as racist and she had to apologize for that. And then she did, she, she, she just, I just thought it was really funny. She was so awesome. She was just such a caricature of like the, the right wing boomer uh, or the out of touch boomer rather. And she was just like, oh, you, well, you know, she even dropped, I've got, I've got many black friends and it was, it was great. Even the other side of the panel, like the 10 laymans, where they were all laughing at her. It was really, it was really confusing. I don't know why she was there. Like, because I, I really felt like it just completely weakened my argument. I was all anti-cancel culture. And then she told like six stories of her doing horrific shit on daytime television. I was like, yeah, well, maybe I'm not 100% anti-cancel culture, am I? Um but anyway, so she's telling stories and then she she uh, she goes, and they made me apologize. Channel 7 or whatever channel it was on that she was on at the time. She was like, they said they forced me to apologize or they wouldn't pay for my legal fees because she was getting sued for some shit that she said. And she talked about that. And then and then later on, she goes, uh, she, she said very confidently, I mean, I've meant every single thing that I've ever said on television. And then I went, other than the apologies. Uh, and then she fucking whips around, cracks it at me. I start laughing again because, I, again, I just think that the idea of her life and her brain is really funny. Uh, and then she, she yells, you're a smart ass. And I said, well, yes, I am. That's why I'm here and it's my job and I get paid to do it. Uh, so, yeah. And that set her off even more to the point where the moderator had to step in and, and tell us to stop <laughs> going back and forth at each other. So I don't know if that's going to make it in the episode, but I do think it's quite funny. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to talk too much about it because I ended up actually writing an entire stand-up bit about her and the whole thing. So that was fun. Uh, it was really interesting. Um, something that I'd never done before. And I, th I think I, I think I came. I think I presented my points well. The the program goes for an hour, but we recorded for two and a half and each guest got like three questions directed at them. And then there was opportunity to, to disagree with each other or, or butt in or add on extra bits. So I would say that like each person spoke maybe four times. And I would imagine that each person's going to get cut down to like one each person will probably get one thing, and then if you if you were really good, you might get a second or a third, maybe. So I don't know how much of mine is going to be included, or how much of anyone's going to be included, or if they're going to cut parts of my answers or what. I don't know how this thing's going to be edited. I am like inherently suspicious of all media organizations when they have the chance to edit. I did try to record my end, but they made us turn our phones off. So lesson learned. Next time I'll be recording on my Apple Watch. Um, but yeah, so we'll see. I actually think that it's going to come out well because the producers have been absolutely lovely uh, and SBS uh, has always treated me right. SBS was actually the very first media organization who ever interviewed me. And this is when doing like the, when I was presenting myself as a villain on purpose so that, so that we could get on a current affair. Uh, and even then they didn't want to present me as a bad guy when I was like literally really, really trying to push the bad guy character and persona so that we could jump from SBS to a current affair. Um, so they've always been good to me. So I, I assume this one will as well. And I'm excited for it to come out. I'll let you guys know. Uh, I really hope they keep in that bit where I just piss her off. Cause that's awesome. Um, speaking of, uh, of uh, crotchety women being upset, uh, Adele's in trouble. Uh, Adele's in big trouble. Adele's a turf. I'm hearing now. Keelan's told me uh, about this story and I watched the clip uh, and I don't understand what people are upset about. Uh, Adele's accepting an award for music, obviously. Uh, it'd be strange if she was accepting it for porn. But she's accepting an award for music uh, at a woman's award or in a women's category. And they've decided to change the category from women's to just gender neutral. Is that the idea? Sorry, we just paused to fact check there. Um, so I'm right. So the Brit Awards... Uh, changed all of their gendered awards to be gender neutral, right? And they did that because Sam Smith, a non-binary singer, came out and said, I don't feel represented in because these awards are gendered. But then they changed it. And now Adele's come out and said, well, now I don't fucking feel represented because there's no category for women. Uh, is kind of what she's saying. Yeah. So, and then, and then now everyone's calling Adele a turf. 
which is a trans exclusionary radical feminist, which is like someone who wants to fight for women's rights and believes that trans women are not women, right? They're like, uh, they, uh, the turf thing is like, and they are real. There are turfs out there. They think that, uh, trans people are, uh, uh, making a mockery of women and, and, uh, 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 I think the turf ideology, from what I understand of it, is they look at trans women uh, like blackface, basically. Like, oh, you're just imitating us, you're not actually us, and your imitation is offensive. Uh, which I don't prescribe to. Um, but I don't think that Adele is is being a turf by being disappointed that there's no award for women. I don't think that's a thing. I, I think that you can have gender neutral awards and you can have men's awards and you can have women's awards. I think that, you know, it, especially in categories like art where stuff that men make is so different to what, what women make and, and what women and men enjoy is, is so wildly different. Like, I mean, you fucking see it with, with pop songs and, and uh, rap and different genres of music. It's like often there's like a wildly different ratio from men to women and also, and that's in the audience, but then also with creators, it's wildly different as well. So, like, there's more men in certain genres of, of music and then there's more women in others. And I think that, oh, my God, my dog is suffocating. <laughs> my dog does this thing where she's got such a big head, such a big, heavy head. It's, I feel like it's made of stone. Can you put your voice memo up to her so we can just hear What's happening now? She will put her, she'll lie down on the couch and then she'll rest her neck. She'll rest her neck on the armrest and then just hang her head over. And her head is so fucking heavy that she just suffocates herself. And then all I can hear is her choking to death on the weight of her own head while she sleeps. Can you move her head? Oh, she's moved it herself. Good. Right. Reminds me of me when I sleep. That's that's literally what I sound like when I'm asleep. I've got the perfect dog for me. Um, but but it's not like Adele came out and she didn't she didn't say we should not have gender neutral awards. She came out and said basically I think we should have awards for women. I don't I don't think that's a controversial thing to say. Is that crazy that it's I don't think we should get rid of every single gendered term or gendered thing or gendered category. I think that's kind of wild and I don't think it's exclusionary to non-binary people or to trans people to have categories for men and women as long as you don't go as long as you're not saying this is not for you guys you know you can have like a fucking gender neutral thing and stuff for women and stuff for men and then everyone gets their own fucking category where they feel safe and at home in I don't think the answer to people feeling left out is to take something away from a different group. That's not really like when you see two babies upset, you know, one baby's got a toy, the other one doesn't. The answer isn't take the toy away from one baby and give it to the other one. The answer is give both to, to each baby. Um, I don't know. I think, I just think that whole thing is weird. And it's also like really assuming a lot about Adele's intentions. Like she's come out and gone, I think it's a shame that women don't get their own award. And everyone's going, Oh, that means that you hate non-binary people. And you don't think trans women are real women. And Adele's like, Oh, I, I don't know, man. I just want to like sing and in a beautiful voice and talk in an ugly one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, this thing is like, it's like, you know what it is? It's it's just like when she lost heaps of weight. Like everyone assumed that this meant that she hated fat people or that she was doing it in a in a body shaming way rather than doing something nice for herself. You know, like the, rather than the honestly the the answer to a lot of this shit is uh is uh yeah, I wasn't I wasn't really thinking about you at all actually. You know? Like oh, you're 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 doing this and you mean you know when you're when you have when you're self-conscious about something and someone says something that triggers you a little bit and you go, oh, they meant this by that. Then the answer is almost always they actually didn't didn't even think of you in that moment. They weren't trying to do anything uh, to, to even address you. Like you're not in the conversation about this. So I don't know, man. I think have your fucking gender neutral awards, but you don't have to get rid of men's and women's because because I, I feel like that's just taking shit away from women uh i don't know I, that shit just rings very weird to me um but it probably makes the program shorter not having men's and women's awards
you know, probably makes it heaps shorter. Uh, yeah, I think that when you get rid of like gender categories, what that almost always, what almost always ends up happening is women end up losing out because because dudes rock, you know. <laughs> like if you took if you took the, if you took the categories away from sport, hey, see you later, chicks. Go go play something else, you know. That's that's what happens. If you took away the the fucking women's and the men's divisions, you wouldn't be seeing many ponytails bobbing along on the 100 meter sprint. Is all I'm trying to say. You're not going to see any fucking mini skirts on the tennis court anytime soon if you took away the the men's and the women's championship. That's all, all right? Look. I'm a fucking island boy. I'm an island boy. The island boy's house got raided uh, because they were caught up in a murder investigation for the murder of an eight-year-old boy. I killed an eight-year-old boy. I killed an eight-year-old boy. They weren't implicated, which, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, thank God, I'm not. I'm upset, right? Because that means they're fake gangsters. (laughs) I don't know. That's I just love that like the I really like that the Island Boys happened and then they did their funny cameos and then and then they they got into a fight with Logan Paul and then we didn't hear about them for fucking months and then the next time we hear from them is not because of their new song it's because it's because they were hanging out with a guy who killed a kid. You know, could be worse. They could be hanging out with a guy who fucked a kid, you know. They could be doing some Prince Andrew shit, right? Jeffrey Epstein's Island Boy. I don't know. Are they implicated in that? Do you want me to look it up? Isn't that what you're doing? Is that why you're here? To, yeah, sorry. to find additional information on my riffs so I'm not just singing about murdering an eight-year-old child? <laughs> that, if, that, if that bit didn't make people laugh, you know who, whose fault that is. That's yours. Uh, I'll Island be on SBS next week again. The Island Boy. I've seen that. That was that was Tom. Yeah, Tom. Tom made the Island Boys sh- shout out Ghislaine Maxwell. That's good. Yeah, um, no one credited me for that. Yeah, I love that. Like, oh, someone, someone managed to get Ghislaine Maxwell to shout out. So- and it didn't in that video. He put himself in front of her cameo. His website. And on his and his website, and they still managed to crop him out. The internet's fucking disgusting. Um, you know, she might get off. She she's going for a mistrial. And she probably will get the miss. She actually, on paper, should win the mistrial. Uh, from what I understand, I believe one of the jurors lied about having experience with uh, uh, sex abuse, oh. and they were a victim, and they said that they weren't, or something like that. So she, I mean, if you want to talk court of law, she should get a mistrial yeah. because of that, because one of the jurors will be heavily, obviously, biased, which they shouldn't be, um, but. I don't know. It just means she she might get off. G- Lucky Ghislaine strikes again. Lucky Ghislaine. Yeah, that's what we're calling it from now on. Old Lucky. Old Lucky. Um, I've got some. I've got some goss. You want to talk about some goss? All right. A little bit more about me. Uh, I have some goss here. Uh, I've got some fucking Scomo goss. Right. This is hot off the press. Not even the press know this one. So Scott Morrison, right, is getting is getting his balls raked along the coals, right? Because the media knows that the Liberals are going to lose. So what they're doing is they're just uh, betraying their former partners as they always do, right? This, you, you might notice the Australian media does this, is they pick a favourite and then they promote them and they go, yeah, and they help them win and they win and then they're really buddy-buddy and then if they fuck up or if it looks like the public gonna go, are going to turn on them, the media then turns on them and helps the other guy win in exchange for favours. They're just playing both sides as they always have and as they always will. Good on him. It's a hustle, right? Now, Scott Morrison, he came down to Victoria. Now, I'm going to say something, and and I think that you all are going to be very disappointed in me, and I'm a little bit disappointed in myself as well. Scott Morrison did a bit of a photo op where he showed up to a, a cafe uh, to to just, you know, it was that hairdressing photo, that hairdressing photo that, that went viral, I think it was on that strip of shops in Mount Eliza. Eliza. Now, this is going to disappoint all of you. I was given advance notice and a heads up of Scott Morrison's uh, whereabouts and I decided not to act on it because I couldn't think of anything funny. I I was like, I was told where he was going to be. Someone told me. 
and a sauce. A bottle of tomato sauce told me where Scott Morrison was going to be and his exact whereabouts uh, before he arrived. And I racked my brains, couldn't think of anything funny, and then uh, made a TikTok instead. And that's how the cookie crumbles. Sometimes you, you just don't, you know, you have the opportunity, but you don't have the idea and that's the way it goes. Because the last thing I would want to do is to show up with a shit idea and get shot by the Secret Service for nothing. Right? Couldn't think of anything funny. Um, but now this bottle of tomato sauce told me something else interesting. Okay, so Scott Morrison was, uh, he went to the hairdresser to go and mingle with the plebs. He went, to the, he went to a cafe to go and look like a normal human instead of a fucking android who doesn't care about anyone other than bankers uh, and his rich mates, right? Uh, and what he did, right, was to make himself look like the everyman, the man who's celebrating a post-COVID Australia. He went to a cafe to have a normal meal out. Now, I'm told by this bottle of tomato sauce, which happened to be sitting at the table, uh, was placed on the table with Scott Morrison. ScoMo walks into this cafe, <laughs> unannounced, right? He didn't tell them that he was coming, which is fair, whatever. But he shows up uh, and he was on this street for about 30 minutes and the entire time he was being abused by every single person who walked past, screamed at, told he was a dickhead, told to get out of here, told he was a moron, told that told that he should go on holiday, told that he fucked up COVID. <laughs> Like, literally shit, like, you ruined my fucking life for two years. Get out of here. I'm not voting for you. I used to be a liberal. Get the fuck out of my town. Now, this is in Mount Eliza. This is a rich suburb. They got money there. So they're like, a lot of liberals are there and they ran him out of town. But not only that, this bottle of tomato sauce happened to be in the cafe. No, shush. And, he, and this, this bottle, right, sentient bottle of sauce told me that ScoMo walks in, no mask, <laughs> breaking his own rules, walks into this cafe, no mask, comes in, sits down, has a coffee for the cameras, and then walks out without paying for it. <laughs> he didn't pay for his fucking food at this cafe, right? So that's how ScoMo decide that is so fucking Scott Morrison. You know what's going to make me look good? You know what's going to make me look good in a post-COVID Australia? This is what's going to make me look like I nailed COVID, like I didn't destroy business. What I'm going to do to make myself look good after the, the COVID disaster in Australia, I'm going to go in, no mask, and rob a small business. That's what I'm going to do. Just go in, unannounced, kick the door down, make all of the customers leave in disgust, get a coffee, and walk out without paying for it. And I'll I won't check in either. That is king shit. I might vote for him now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I've, I've heard of any more cunty behavior from anyone. That guy is so oblivious, huh? My favorite shit was, uh, was just him getting absolutely bullied by the press. It is like actually gross seeing how poorly the press is treating him now that they know he's going to lose. It's like they were all, they were being all great. They gave him his, his ScoMo nickname. They they published photos of him being a, a larrikin little uh, Aussie Cobbett bumbling father. They published photos of him doing woodwork in the garage while cunts were burning alive in their homes. And then the minute he shows any weakness, they go, oh, this guy sucks, doesn't he? This guy's always sucked. Disregard the years of positive press we gave him. This guy's always sucked and we always knew it. The media is fucking evil, dude. And you can't trust anything that you see online, which brings me to my next point. How long are we going here? 35 minutes. 35 minutes. Great. We've got enough time to talk about killing and getting cancelled, and then we have miscellaneous bit at the end. But before that, uh, I want to talk about your balls, all right? Shave them with the with the Lawnmower 4.0 brought to you by Manscaped. And use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The Lawnmower 4.0, the best ball bag trimmer in the game, something that I dearly miss I left mine in Tasmania and I'm in shambles. Don't end up like me, all right? Shave your taint, okay? Ladies, you can use it. It's a manscaped. I reckon, just like the Brit Awards, we should just change it to the scaped. We should change it to the, the, to the, to the whatever genitals you have scaper, you know? Whatever genitals you may or may not have or have both of scaper. At, at manscaped.com, 
Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. They've got a bunch of other personal grooming stuff. Uh, seriously, a really great product. I use it all the time, or I was using it all the time before I left it in Tasmania, but I will retrieve it and I will continue to use it. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS, 20% off, free shipping. Support the brands that support my show, dude. I used mine last night. You used it last night? How'd you go? Good. That's yeah. good. You're hairless. That's really great. Good. So, you know what? That's a that's a saddest, another satisfied customer. Out there satisfying customers. Thanks to <laughs> the manscaped.com lawnmower 4.0. Use code SPEARS. Helps me out. All right? Now, uh, we're coming off the back of a big hoax. We've done it again. You know what? You, you know what? It's that time of year. You know? It's suspiciously somehow every single time I have a few thousand tickets to sell, I just have another big idea. Something about needing to sell thousands and thousands of tickets in Melbourne makes me come up, get the, it gets those creative juices flowing. It makes me want to do a video that performs well and gets a lot of views and sells a lot of tickets. It's something in the air. Uh, and we did it again. Uh, this one was a collaboration. Uh, this one was, uh, was, was uh, conceived by the think tank known as Keelan and Spears Incorporated. Uh, we managed to uh, get Keelan completely cancelled on TikTok, which is just a TikTok is going to be uh, now. I come now. I come from Facebook, all right, and I and as and as a Facebook native, this is how I blew up on Facebook. TikTok is the most toxic platform I've ever seen in my fucking life, and I came from Facebook pre-moderation. I come from an era where if you got banned from Facebook for for uh, literally bullying someone, if you just kept hitting the post button. It would just let you post it, even if you had a 30-day ban. If you just kept clicking it, the, the system would fail and it would just post whatever you wanted to post, even though you're supposed to be banned for 30 days. That's where I come from, and TikTok's worse, right? Uh, we're having a night out after our work party, uh, and uh, Keelan goes, oh, I want to post something that makes me look like a really annoying fan. <laughs> so we, in, in about 10 seconds, we film this, this stupid TikTok of Keelan going up to me asking for a photo i'm pretending to be on the phone i say fuck off we already took a photo i act like a cunt he acts really annoying he touches me posts it we didn't think anything of it really right wake up the next day hundreds of thousands of views like four hundred thousand views and then i'm like all right well let's let's really do this properly then let's do this uh and let's make a video out of it and i tried to turn the thing into like an experiment like what how how much will how much of a fake story will people believe? You know, like how fake a story will people still believe? Um, and I end up playing the role of like the outraged, verified blue tick influencer who you haven't really heard of, but you decide to believe because they speak charismatically. And I make this uh, TikTok just condemning kill, and it's still up. I mean, it, it might get taken out for bullying at any time because I was very mean. I take this video. Um, absolutely trashing this weird fan who, who harassed me in the street. And then that video goes up and within like, what, three days or so, it's sitting on almost 6 million views. And then Keelan's one, which was on 400,000, jumped up to like 3 million and his life is ruined. Uh, death threats every day, DMs on Instagram, hundreds of thousands of comments calling him a horrible person, insulting his looks, really everything that I've said over many episodes of this podcast, <laughs> just all at once at the same time from hundreds of thousands of people. <laughs> and it's fucking crazy because on all of his social media and all of my social media accounts, we feature in it very prominently and it's so obvious that we're both friends that it's crazy how uh, people will just go after a guy they've never heard of based on the word of a different guy they've never heard of. I don't have 6 million fans, right? I don't have 6 million people who, who, who are familiar enough with me to know that I do this sort of thing. So all these people are just taking my word for it because I was angry in the video and then going out of the way to like destroy the life of a private citizen. It's fucking crazy. Uh, and they've all done that without even taking two seconds out of their day to check whether it's true or not. Um, and it's almost the, the scariest part about all of this shit, though, is the fact that there were a lot of people who did work out that it was fake. And some of those people are like the top comment of both videos going on. This is obviously fake. Check their other posts. But most people responding to those comments who are telling the truth with evidence are calling those people stupid and saying, no, it's real. Shut the fuck up, you're an idiot. 
And it's like people would rather destroy an innocent man's life than feel a little bit silly for two seconds and delete their comment and go, oh, actually. Uh, and it, it really shows how, uh, how, how massively the internet can just let a lie get out of control and how difficult it is once that lie is out there, how difficult it is to rein it in. Because I've done a YouTube video and I've done a TikTok uh, and so has Keelan, you know, revealing the truth and how we did it and and, and uh, how we pulled it off. Uh, and, you know, to, to put perspective in, my fake video has 6 million views. Keelan's has 3 million. So let's say fucking 8 million people hate Keelan. And the truth, I mean, I only posted it before I recorded. The truth has 13,000 views on TikTok. Uh, and then on YouTube, uh, as of recording, only has about 10,000. So that's... Like, imagine if this was a real story or imagine if this was a fake story, but I didn't know Keelan and I just made up some crazy shit about him, spread this malicious rumor to ruin his life. And now the truth is coming out. It doesn't matter. Millions of people have gone, fuck that guy. uh, And they'll never see the truth. They're just walking around with this terrible idea of Keelan. (laughs) Makes you, makes you worry for your safety when you go out on a Friday night. Hey, there's that guy from the TikTok. Get him. Leave Lewis alone. Relatively big TikTok, like, like, okay, relatively big, like 10, 20,000 followers. Yeah. He posts, like, viral videos all the time. Messaged me and he, he, oh, no, he commented some, like, super aggressive thing about how much of a dick I was. Yeah. And then he realized, oh, it's, a, it's fake. And then he messaged me, like, oh, man, that's so funny. And I just, re- I just replied to him with, like, what was with the message then? What was with the comment, the really aggressive comment? Yeah. What a fake loser yeah. to like, because what that is, is that's like sucking up to me by sending you horrible things to get in my good books and then hope, hoping to God that you didn't see that message yeah. and then sucking up to you. I just coincidentally had followed him previously for something else he made. Yeah. So I was just like, you're a douchebag. What a loser. Yeah. I mean, you know what? What a loser for commenting anything on social media. <laughs> Like if you comment anything, I, I I would never write anything negative on social media. It's not, I would never, I would, so I'll think it, I'll go, that sucks. Or I might create something funny as a response to it because that's my job. But sitting there and, and like writing paragraphs, oh, this is fucked and you're a fucking loser or messaging someone is like so weird. Uh, that shit's lame. Um, so yeah, that's, that was a bit of fun. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the new, uh, the setup, the new studio would love some constructive feedback. How does it look? How does it sound? How did you like the editing? This is a whole new style that we're going for that, uh, myself and Rosie have really kind of taken hold of with both hands. And we're really trying to push out that standard of quality going forward because obviously it's been two years of like whatever we can do um and i haven't honestly haven't been too happy with the videos that i've been putting out i mean you know i they're okay but i haven't been like oh fuck you i'm super proud of uh this uh not only only a few of them i've been like yeah this one's great but um other than really the stand-up i've just been like making whatever i can make so that you know, I, I don't fucking go under or I don't like disappear. But now got the studio, got everything set up, put heaps of effort, heaps of money, uh, heaps of time uh, into uh, I, what I hope will be like the, the, the next evolution of my content, the new era uh, and uh, the way forward and out of all this kind of bullshit, putting it all behind us. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I hope you guys enjoy uh, everything that we do in the future and... Uh, I'm very excited to say that I'm bringing bi-monthly bull back. I'm bringing it back uh, with, you know, less Luke and Lewis time and more employees helping me out and heaps of credit card debt. I'm very confident that I can pump out this series and uh, I'm not going to make too many promises on when it's coming out or how often. I'm just going to do it and you can just watch me do it uh, and we'll see. All right. Because I've promised that a few too many times. I posted, uh, we've, we've rebranded all of it, doing all the graphics, and I put uh, some sneak peeks of it in, in the Patreon Discord, and everyone was so excited, but, it, but in, in the way where, like, uh, where, where like uh, if, you, if you gave a beaten dog some food, he'd be like, fuck you, yeah, I'm so starving, but dear God, I don't trust you. I'll eat it when you leave the room. You know, like, that was, that was, 
that was what I really got from the Patreon supporters. Was like, oh man, that's that's going to be so good if if you do that. <laughs> if I've I've trusted you too many times, man, and I've I've felt the cold sting of a backhanded slap. That is not that is doing it tw- doing two episodes and then not uploading it for nine months and then coming back and then doing that again. So uh, I'm going to do it this time, probably. All right, that's that's my promise. That's that's my assurance that I'll probably do that. Um, and that's always how it goes with me. Every time I say I'm going to do something, I don't. And every time I'm like, oh, I might, I, I do. Um, and that's not a promise. Um, because if it was, then I wouldn't do it. All right, it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end here. Uh, if you would like to send an email into the podcast, please do email me, podcast at loosebeers.com. The last uh, suggestion almost made Keel and vomit, uh, and, uh, and it took me three hours to convince him to come back next week. Um, so what I have here is I've got a quick one. Uh, found out a girl I've been crushing over since September has a boyfriend. Real simp hours. Um, Hey, Lewis, I was browsing through Instagram when I clicked on the profile of a classmate that I truly hate. Uh, he's an asshole and looks ginger and Asian at the same time. That's uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's a great start to the email. Uh, hating a guy for seemingly no reason and being kind of racist. He has a skateboard, plays the ukulele, gets put in really good private school just to get shit grades and complain. Essentially the most boring person ever. I don't know, man. I feel like skateboarding and playing musical instruments is kind of interesting, dude. (laughs) Sounds like you might dislike this guy for a different reason. (laughs) Uh, I check on his tagged posts. Oh man, you're okay. Look, I try to be balanced and fair when I read these emails. uh, And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to say something very fair. You're a loser. If you're looking through someone's tagged photos, you're a dork. The only thing, you, the only way you can get sadder than that is looking through someone's liked, like what they've liked on Twitter or what they've liked on Instagram. Like, dude, don't, don't be like, oh, this guy's a fucking loser, and then look through his tagged photos. All right, look in the mirror, bro. I'm not saying you're a loser. I'm saying maybe you dislike this guy too much, and it's affecting your your uh, ability to be a normal human. Um, uh, I checked on his tagged and scrolled through. Great, another asshole guy from the same school. I check through this guy's posts and I find a photo. Oh, so a different guy who you dislike now for even less of a reason because you don't even know this dude. He's just friends with the other guy that you hate for uh, playing the ukulele and being Asian. Uh, I check through this guy's posts and I find a photo from a little double date where my crush is kissing that little twat of a ginger. Oh, no, he's being cucked. Uh, That ginger Asian kid. I have no intent intention of doing anything about it as I essentially feel powerless right now. I mean, what, what are you going to do? Hey, what, what do you mean? You, well, oh, I've got no intention to do What would you do? Hey, hey, stop, stop fucking the girl that I'm not fucking or else I'll, I'll break your ukulele. Do I get back at him out of jealousy or do I just cope to myself? I feel like it's just a boohoo get over it type situation, but I had to ask the king of getting put on fetish sites for advice first. First time I feel truly down bad, have a shit one. Yeah, uh, look, bro, I'm going to... I'll Look, okay, I'm sorry for being so mean. Seems like you really like this girl and you're responding emotionally. Um, <laughs> you need to get over it, dude. Like, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with a guy you don't know uh, kissing a girl you like who doesn't... Sounds like she doesn't like you. Uh, I, you gave me no information about the girl. Uh, sounds like you don't have a. You're not in a relationship. You're not dating. It sounds like you haven't even made your intentions clear. So if you're not if you're not going to tell a girl that you like her, you can't get angry at the guy who does. That's what you should be doing. That could be you. You know, without the freckles. Uh, look, yeah, I don't know, man. It sounds honestly sounds like uh, loser behavior. I'm, I'm just gonna be real with you. This is this is loser, sad behavior. You need to fucking stop looking at other people and work on yourself. This type of like malicious jealousy and stalking a man for seemingly no reason is weird, sad behavior. And someone's gonna tell you that, and it's gonna be me today. So I would just, yeah, this this is a boohoo get over it situation. If you don't like this guy. It seems like you don't have a reason other than he's doing what you wish you would do, you could do with this girl. So either <clears throat> make your intentions with this girl clear and see if you can, you know, date her. I don't know if these guys are in a relationship. If they are, you should leave them alone. But if, if you know, they're just doing like little casual dates, there's no, not really any harm in talking to the girl. 
Um, but I would uh, I would just leave this one alone, dude. To be honest, I, it sounds like she sounds like she likes this guy and you don't, and that's the problem. Uh, so you move on, find someone else, learn how to play the ukulele. I don't know. Uh, this is definitely weird. Uh, woe is me, self-pity moment behavior. If you're sitting there looking at someone else living the life you wish you could and instead of figuring out how you could better yourself in your situation, you decide to hate that person, uh, you're sad uh, and that sucks. So uh, work on yourself, man. Hit the gym. Find a hobby. Uh, get out there and get some self-esteem, all right? I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much. I'm Lewis Spears. If you want to listen to uh, more Spearhead Sundays, there is an extended version of this uh, episode up right now on Patreon. All right. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you next Sunday and I hope you have a shit one. Let me know what you think about that video and send an email to podcast at lewispears.com.